told my guide Dmitri that I wanted a traditional Ukrainian meal, and he did not disappoint. He, re he recommended a uh, restaurant out here called Opanas, where I had uh, a borscht, a pancake thing with mushrooms on it, uh, and chicken Kiev, which was a lot like chicken cordon bleu, except with more herby stuff in it. Also, the dessert was pretty cool. I think I just ordered a pierogi filled with cherries. But I think my favorite part of the evening was uh, the live band, which was a three-piece accordion, lute, and fiddle. The accordion player, uh, while playing the accordion, alternated between tweeting like a bird and saying wahoo like Mario. If you think I'm joking. I love Ukraine. It's like drinking smoke with a little bit of apple. Am I vaping? All right, no more of this missile-based Chernobyl Eurovision business. It was time for me to experience the real Ukraine. I started by spending two very real days in a coffee shop logging footage from Chernobyl so I didn't forget anything. I had a few days left in Kiev, so I thought I'd check out a local market to see if anyone was selling video games. They were, including classics like Doom 4. Nearby was an open-air flea market, where I spent hours scouring boxes of junk until I found what I was looking for. The original Dendi was a Famicom clone sold in the USSR, but these appear to be some sort of Sega variant, or perhaps a bootleg of a bootleg. I'd never seen a Dendi in person, and while these were in pretty rough shape, it was still thrilling to find. You can't go to Kiev in 2017 and not think about what happened here just three years earlier. This central square, called Maidan, was the site of some fierce fighting between pro-independence protesters and Ukrainian government forces. It was not only the most beautiful part of the city I saw, but also the most powerful, especially after walking a few blocks up the hill. Memorials line the sidewalks, and signs of the conflict are still visible. The following day I left Kiev, using a method I had never before used, a sleeper train. This is way smaller than I thought it would be, and very intimate. And actually for a second I thought I was going to get uh, the compartment to myself, but a guy showed up at the last minute. I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. I really just should have booked this other bed too. But he was really nice, he even knew a little English, and uh, you know, we went to sleep pretty much as soon as the train started moving, so it wasn't that big of a deal. The bed, however, not the most comfortable. Nine hours later, we arrived 300 miles to the south in the city of Odessa. When I got off the train, completely by coincidence, I met the only other person I knew in Ukraine, Nick, who had shown up at the cloth map meetup in Kiev. We walked around and shot crossbows. Got it in the yellow, so I'm happy. By the way, it's true what they say, FIFA is pretty popular over here, especially at a bar with a name like this. After getting some coffee out of the back of a van, we walked over to see the Potemkin Steps, which the movie nerd in me was pretty jazzed to see. We couldn't actually climb them or push any strollers down them, since they were under construction, but it was still cool. Aside from that, Odessa seemed pretty quiet. But I had heard from a number of Ukrainians about a city called Lviv, so I decided to call an audible and cut my Odessa time short to check it out. So I woke up at 4 a.m. to catch my uh, flight from Odessa to Kiev, where I am right now, because 
uh, the plane was delayed a little bit and I missed my connection. So I've been sitting in this airport for a few hours and have a few hours to go uh, before getting on to Lviv. My laptop uh, is actually in my checked bag, which is already in Lviv, hopefully. The day started in Lviv, as days often do, with cosplayers. Are you from Bioshock? Yeah, sure. Nice! Yes. Wow, that's perfect! Boris and Julia were from Kharkov, a city in the east, aka where war is happening. Their trip out west to Lviv was for a convention, which they say sees smaller and smaller numbers of attendees as the troubles in the country persist. You never know who you're gonna run into. It's easy to see why Lviv is a vacation spot for Ukrainians. It's gorgeous. Lviv already seems way more European and just from the architecture and there's a lot of squares and statues around and stuff. Lviv is also known for its coffee. This place, Lviv Coffee Mining Manufacture, was a wonderland for any coffee nerd. They made coffee in the traditional Turkish style. This is heated and you move it around? Sand. You can also tour the mine, which basically amounts to a giant bar in the basement. Something every respectable business should have. This place served coffee with cardamom. Then, and I'm still not really sure how this happened, I got roped into a group of travel bloggers. I essentially crashed a media tour sponsored by the city of Lviv. Before I knew it, I was having lunch on Lviv's dime in a World War II resistance-themed restaurant, complete with password. We went to a brewery with a museum in the basement. Like grape nuts. I had too many glasses of this cherry liqueur, which was incredibly tasty. We met the mayor. Then there was fire. It was a delightful and insane day in Lviv. But I still had a few plane rides to go before things got really weird. <laughs> 